go dry this January. This is a message from the World Without Wine, which is calling for more people to take a break from alcohol and join the sober challenge this month. It says 20% of regular drinkers will become alcohol dependent over the years. We speak now about the campaign by founder of World Without Wine, Janald Goran. Thank you very much, Janald, for your time this morning. Uh, so what actually gave birth to this campaign? What did you see that propelled a need for this message? Uh, okay, hi, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Just to correct you there, uh, we rebranded from World Without Wine to Tribe Sober this year. So we're at Tribe Sober now. Thank if you, anyone Tribe wants Sober. to go to our website and, and read all about it. Um, yeah, so what prompted it? Let me think back. We, this is the seventh year that we've done this. and. I gave up drinking seven years ago, and I guess um, it changed my life to such an extent that I wanted to encourage other people to do the same thing. And about the time that I gave up drinking, I came across this wonderful NGO called Earth Child, and I thought, how can I um, combine what I'm doing, the work that I'm going to be doing to help people to, um, to change their drinking habits, how can I combine this with Earth Child and, and help them to generate some more funding? So myself and the founder of uh, Earth Child, Jana Kretzmar, we came up with this idea of doing a dry January. We thought, well, um, we can support people through a dry January by sending them daily emails and by putting them in a community so they connect, connect with other challenges. And in exchange for that support, We'll, offer, we'll ask them to make a donation to Earth Child. So we started that seven years ago, and it's been going really, really well. We get more people doing it every year. Um, some of those people decide that they feel so great after a, a month without alcohol, they decide to make it a permanent thing. From the work that you do, what is it that you find? Is it that people do not know that, you know, there are health risks to this, especially, um, you know, if you go overboard? Um, you'll find in conversations people saying, oh, I simply just can't, I, I can't let this go. I need it to cope with the pressures of this life. Uh, absolutely. There's, there's a huge amount of, um, I don't want to say ignorance, but people don't understand, you know, how, how toxic alcohol is to such an extent that just taking one month off, you know, doing a dry January will have significant health benefits. I mean, my example would be, I mean, I, w I was a social drinker in my uh, 20s and 30s, and then I started using it to cope, you know, just as you said then, using it for stress, using it to self-medicate, really, for my anxiety as well. And then um, I contracted breast cancer. And, of course, I now know that heavy drinking and breast cancer are linked. The evidence is out there. But at the time, in 2006, when I got breast cancer, I had no idea that there was any link between that and my heavy drinking. So that's just one example. You know, now the evidence is out there. Alcohol is linked to seven different types of cancer, 60 diseases. It's, it's lethal. You know, it needs to be treated with respect. And some people are fortunate. Some people are able to drink moderately. But moderate drinking is just a bottle and a half of wine a week. And I was drinking that every night. <laughs> mm. You know, mm. you, you have to educate yourself, really. And then if you are able to catch this habit early enough, then uh, fantastic. You know, but just make sure that you drink safely and you're very unlikely to, to harm your health. Uh, you mentioned that alcohol should be respected. I agree. So you also note that drinking alcohol is like throwing gasoline on the fire of anxiety and depression. Should we also not be looking at people's mental health? We spoke of life's pressures, right, which are some of the push factors that lead people to drink. So maybe not even asking the question of what makes you an alcoholic, but rather what is it that is going on in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit that leads you to drink excessively? Absolutely. There, there is a link, you know, between mental health and, and drinking. I would say that it kind of masks our, the true state of our mental health. 
And we have people in our community that were in therapy for years about their anxiety. And then they stop drinking for a few months and they say, my anxiety has just melted away. You know, I feel so much calmer. I don't even bother going to, to therapy anymore. So if I would say if you do have mental health worries, then just stop drinking for a while and see what's there. Because uh, it's such a trap, you know, so many of us, myself included, we start drinking because of anxiety and because of depression, and it makes it so much worse. You speak or you mention the word trap, and I think of where I come from, for instance, um, every corner or every third house, there's a place or an establishment that sells alcohol. South Africa in generally, I think you go everywhere, there's, you know, advertising for it you see it everywhere it looks so cool on television right so there's also early entry um, by children um, into this drinking habit or into this drinking spree what do you perceive these to be done in terms of I'm not sure whether it's legally or socially what we need to do as a country to to, to sort of bring this down there's no one paying attention to this I from what I'm seeing at least yeah, I mean, we've been manipulated endlessly by the liquor industry. You know, it's all about huge profits and the pressures that can be put on, on government. So, the, in my opinion, you know, if I could uh, wave a magic wand, I would ban all alcohol uh, advertising because it, it's glamorized, it, uh, particularly for women. I mean, for 25 years now, the liquor industry have been targeting women because they want us to drink more. So that's where all the mommy juice um, comes from. That's the, the way that we all think wine is terribly sophisticated, etc. So there's been massive campaigns for decades now. But I don't think, I mean, certainly here at Tribe Sober, I can't fight, you know, the liquor industry. But what we can do and what we try to do tirelessly is to educate people. You know, say drink if, if you want to, but just be careful and educate yourself and don't drink more than, than the limits. And more importantly than all, take a break. And that's what our campaigns are like. You know, we do Sober Spring in September and we do Dry January because we just want people to take a break, mainly because then they can test their dependence. And if you can get through a month without alcohol with no problem at all, you don't even think about it, then that's fantastic. It means you've got a very healthy relationship with alcohol. But if you can't get through it, or if you can't even contemplate it, you know, maybe you're watching this now thinking, who is that crazy person? There's no way I could get through a month without alcohol. Then you need to do something. And I learned quite recently, there's been a very interesting study done by uh, an American sobriety group called The Tempest. And they uh, surveyed 250 people in recovery. And they asked them the question, how long was it between uh, the time when you knew you had a problem with alcohol and the time that you reached out to get some help? And the average time is 11 years. Hmm. And it took me about that time. So now I say to people, don't wait 11 years, you know, make a change now. Is the way, um, and I'm asking you from the work that you do, is the way this is communicating, working, um, do people get it? Um, I, I'm not sure how else to ask it, I guess in a sense that when you tell me, oh, don't drink, you know, it's, it's dangerous for you. Don't do this, don't do this, the don'ts, don'ts, don'ts. Does it get people to not? Well, that's why our challenges are so good, you know, because we're not saying don't drink. We're saying do an experiment. See what your life will be like without alcohol for a month. Be sober curious. And then the, the, the benefits come in and people start thinking, oh, it's pretty nice, you know, waking up, feeling energetic, not having a headache. And as the benefits come in, that's when people start realizing that there, there are advantages to doing this. And the longer you go um, alcohol free, the better you feel. And then it, the motivation is intrinsic. You know, you, it's being driven from yourself, not by what somebody else is telling you. Janet Gorand of Tribe Sober, thank you very much for your time Thank this you. morning.